doing it. So um, anyhow, I want to just talk with you for just a little while this morning um, about some things as we, and then I want to give you an opportunity to, um, to give thanks to the Lord because we said we would do that uh, this morning as well. And uh, I want to talk for a little bit this morning about essentials. I need one other thing. Sister Ida, would you get me my purse, please? I have, I have essentials in my purse, yes. Thank you. I want to ask you this morning, I must have a lot of essentials, right? I, I think, uh, Johnny, where is your purse? <laughs> he says, I didn't bring it. Brother XP, where, where's your purse? <laughs> Apparently, women have more essentials than men, right? Yes. It, is that true? So if I were to ask you what your essentials are, and we're going to talk about essentials 2023, what would you say, what would you say your essentials are? Uh, obviously, I have too many essentials. What, what would you say? I, me, I would say, I'm so sorry, I have to have tissue. Maybe it's just my nose. I don't know. Tissue is one of my essentials. What's another essential? Okay, everybody, everybody, or, or some, and if you don't have a phone, then you probably forgot it. I don't know, she forgot it this morning. So probably all of us would say this, and if you've got this these days, this sort of takes the place of almost everything, right? If they could figure out some way to use it as tissue, we'd be good. Um, but this has, you name it, this has money, this has, this has everything on it as well. Any other essentials? Well, me, because my lips are really dry, I take chapstick. I, I don't care about, I'm so sorry, I don't care about lipstick at all, but my lips get dry, so I, I have to have chapstick. That's almost an essential. Some of you would say, no, not for me. And then, I'm, now, I'm so sorry, you see the color. This is an essential, right? Everybody, do you know anybody in Hong Kong who doesn't have one of these? No, we all have, right? You don't have one? And some of you, if depending on your age, you have one that's a different color. <laughs> This is my joy card. <laughs> is that what it's called? It's my joy you card. <laughs> so Brother XP and Sister Ampi, look, she's so kind. Sister Ampi's holding hers up as well. Same color. Just last week. Just last week. It's great. $1.90 for an MTR trip. <laughs> How great is that? Ida has hers. Sister Lisa, just bravely hold yours up as well. It's, it's kind of gray, so maybe, so maybe it matches our hair, right? <laughs> It matches our hair. Oh, that hurts, doesn't it? That's painful when we say that. When you say it that way. A any other essentials? Yes. Hong Kong ID. Hong Kong ID. That's definitely have to have essentials. Keys are essentials. And since COVID, some sort of hand sanitizer, right? Have you ever gone out without hand sanitizer and you feel like I'm naked? Where's my hand sanitizer, right? Everybody has that, and that's been since COVID. So we've got all, I don't know, are there any other essentials that you say, oh, yes, yes, thank you. Got to have a mask. Yeah. Got to have, that's a brush. A, brush? a toothbrush? I'm so impressed. A tooth, oh, I'll bet she has nice looking teeth. So we have all sorts of things that we say are essentials. And every once in a while, and we could, of course, the list could be longer than that, um, but every once in a while, you know, we get out somewhere uh, and we have forgotten one of those things and we just feel like, <gasps> right? We just feel like I, a couple of times as I've left the church in the afternoon or the evening, I've gone out the back way and I've gotten halfway to my car and I realize I've been walking down the street and people are looking at me like that guy low because I forgot my mask. <laughs> Because I've gone out the back way, and I, I was in the church office, so of course I wasn't wearing it. And, and um, Mr. Chow downstairs, he would surely have told me, ah, Pastor, your mask. Um, and I get halfway, and then I think, what am I going to do? And that's when I get my other essential, my tissue. And I put it over my mouth, and, and then I walk. So we, we all have all sorts of um, essentials. But I want to talk to you for just a little bit uh, this morning about essentials for 2023 um, in, a, in a spiritual way. What are our spiritual, what are our spiritual essentials? Um, and I think, as I've looked and as I've been praying about it, I think that for 2023, uh, we have, there are three essentials. Of course, you could say, yes, eternal life. But I'm speaking to us as uh, people who belong to God. 
uh, God's children. And I think there are three essentials. And the difference is that we don't get these somewhere, but that God provides them for us. And I want to talk for just a little while and look at a, at a, few, at a few verses. Some are very familiar to you, and others you'll say, oh, that's a little bit new. And the first one I want to talk about this morning, I think, I would, I think three cover everything. The first one, I think, is provision. Um, what the, my basic needs, what, how, are, how are my needs met? So I want to talk about for provision, um, and usually we, we associate, associate that with finances. Um, I, I, got to have, I have to have enough for food. I have to have enough for clothes. I have to have enough to, have, to pay the rent, a roof over my head. Um, I have to have enough for those of us who are older. We, all, we even think about I've got to have enough for uh, retirement. If you are quite a bit younger and you'd like to get married, then you may have, you may be thinking about that also, provision. I've got to have enough, I'm gonna get married, and weddings cost this and that. So we think about these provisions, um, and I want to, as we think about that this morning, uh, if I were to ask you, in general, the richest country in the world, what country would you say, probably? Qatar, uh, Qatar but by GDP, Apparently, uh, another country would be, and this is not a contest, I just looked it up last night. The richest country generally in the world would be considered the US, okay? That's not a boast, that's not a whatever, it's just that's by, by accounting or whatever, even though there are some very, very poor people in the US as well. You know what I found out as I was reading and looking? So richest country in the world per capita, GDP per capita, 77% of all Americans, all Americans worry about their finances. 77% in the richest country in the world. I, I don't know, I wanna ask you this morning, do you worry about your finances? Do you worry about your provision? Here we are on the first day of 2023, we're getting ready to walk into a new year. Do you have concerns about that? Does it keep you up at night? Do you worry? Do you think, how am I going to pay for my schooling or my children's schooling? Uh, how am I, do I have enough money to retire? It's time for me to rep retire. Uh, do I have enough for food or this or that? And I want to, uh, let's look at what, what Jesus says um, about, uh, about provision. And this is a, this is a ver these are verses that you know very well. And this is from Matthew chapter 6. And this is from uh, the Sermon on the Mount. Um, when Jesus was in Matthew 5, it's the Beatitudes. And then Jesus starts talking to people, and he says, No one can be a servant of two masters, since either he will hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot be servants of God and of money. And then he's going to start talking about provision. Okay, look at the next verse. This is why I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will, will wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? And we would all say, yes, yes, life is more than food and more than clothing. And yet, food and clothing are important, aren't they? A roof over our heads is important. And Jesus then gives the example. So, so it makes me kind of think, come on, Jesus, I, let's be honest. Come on, Jesus, I've got to have enough to eat. I've got to have enough for clothing. I've got to have enough for food. And then Jesus gives two examples about the birds. Look, the Father feeds them. And we think, oh, isn't that beautiful? But then we still think, but I'm not a bird. I, you know, we use the expression. I don't know if you use, use this expression in your culture. We will say, oh, you eat like a bird. <laughs> have you ever heard that expression before? You eat like a bird. Do you know anybody that eats like a bird? You say, me, I eat like a vulture, <laughs> you know, but um, I, you eat like a bird, but he gives the example of the birds. He says, look, they, they eat and they don't, they don't worry about it. Um, and then he gives another example as well. And he says, your father feeds them and you're, you're more valuable. And then he goes a little bit further. Why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the, the field and how they grow. They don't work or make clothing. Look, but how beautiful they are. And me, I think, well, that's nice, but I'm not a wildflower either. I'm not a lily of the field. But stay with me on this, because then Jesus says, because he's talking about his father, he says, and if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today, thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you, you of little faith. 
So what Jesus is saying to us this morning is, if you and I are really worried and concerned about our provision this morning, our faith is really small. Don't take that in a despising or a bad way, but what it means is we don't really know what our God is like. We don't really know what our Heavenly Father is like because this is not so much about us as it is about God and what he is like for us. And so Jesus says, so don't worry, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? For the idolaters eagerly seek, after, seek all these things. That word idolaters is really strong, but another translation would be pagan or heathen or Gentiles. But basically what it means is this, the people who do not know God. That's the easiest way to put it, okay? The people who do not know God worry about these things and seek after these things. And what he's saying basically is, if you and I are worrying about these things, we're just like they are. And that means we don't know our Father very well. And he drops into the middle of this a really encouraging word. And what he says right there is this, your heavenly Father knows that you need them. It's not that God in heaven who has everything says, ah, oh, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. God says, I know that you need these things. And so this morning, if you're worried and concerned about provi provision, God knows that you need these things. And then he says, here's the key for us. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. Your provision comes when your priorities are right. My provision comes when my priorities are right. Remember the first verse that we read in this section? No, man can, no person can serve two masters, money or God or whatever. For us as Christians and for everyone, if money is what we're going after, I've got to provide, got to provide, pr provide. Money is a horrible, terrible master but a very good servant, a very good servant. And if it rules us, we will be worried all the time. We'll be trying to get more. God says, Jesus says, get your priorities right. Get your priorities straight. Put me first, put me first in your money, in how you deal with your money, in your tithing. I know some people don't like that word, but that's part of it, in your tithing. And all these other things that you think, what about this, what about this, what about this? I'll take, care, I'll take care of these things. I've mentioned this to you before, but I want to give you an example. I could give you many, many other examples from mom and dad and from others as well. But I should, let me give you a personal example again. I think some years ago I mentioned this. When I first came to Hong Kong, I lived in China for many years, and um, my income in China was very, very small, very, very small, but I was able to save just a little bit. And then I came to Hong Kong to help here at Lighthouse. And the first year I was here in Hong Kong, one of the most expensive cities in the world, I received no income and no, I received no salary from Lighthouse at all. And that's not a complaint, that's not a whatever, that's just the way, that's just the way that it was. I came to help mom and dad and was helping in the church. And um, I, in the beginning, I slept on the floor uh, behind the sofa in mom and dad's village house at 36 years of age and I kind of thought, I put my I put my clothes on the bookshelf behind the sofa. I had a little I had like a little cubby hole, a little cave that I would go into every night um, because that's all I didn't have. An, that's what I could afford. And then afterwards, I thought I've got to have my own place. And so I moved into uh, into a very small house where Keith. Sorry, not house. Very small apartment in the same area where Keith and B live. The Moody family lives now, and I'd come here. Uh, and was working because I'd really prayed about it and I felt this is what I should do. I felt this is what God said to do. And what I saw for that year, as I had to pay rent, but there was no money coming in, was that my finances just went, shh, they just went down. They just went down. I almost never, I didn't go out to eat and whatever. I had to save my money because I didn't have a lot. But I felt like God said, do this. And so I thought, okay. I will honor the Lord. I'll seek him first. And I'm, I'm not trying to be, please understand, I'm not trying to be boastful. I promise I'm not trying to be boastful. It's just a very specific example. At the end of that year, people 
from the city where I had lived before, up north, where I had taught for so many years, came, and they gave me an envelope. I'd gone back up for a visit, visit and was taking the last of my things, and they gave me an envelope, and it was quite thick, and they said, open it later. I said, oh, okay. I didn't know what it was. I, did, I, I truly, I didn't know. When I got back to the room, getting ready, to, I opened it, and it was 12,000 US dollars. 12,000 US dollars. More than enough to pay for my rent for that past year when it had all gone out and pay for all those expenses. And right after that, then, Lighthouse began to help in certain areas with my transport and things like that. And I want to tell you, I'm telling you that not to praise me, but I really mean it to praise God. You can trust God. You can trust God. If you will put him first, he will, keep, he will put you first. He will take care of you, and he will provide for you. And that's just a simple example. If I were to ask you for some examples right now, I'll bet everybody here who has put God first would have a tes testimony to tell as well, right? You would have a testimony of God's faithfulness. So all I want to say to you this morning is God will provide. As you go into 2023, one of your essentials is provision. And God will take care of you. He will. That's his promise to you. That's his guarantee to you. That's what he does as your father. And he will, he will never, never fail you. Uh, I want to read you uh, one, other, uh, one other verse as well from here. Let me see if I can... Let me see if I can find it. Let's see. Isaiah. Here we go. My slides are messed up just a little bit. I want to read you two other, a few other verses related to provision. Look with me at Isaiah 55.1. And Isaiah writes, Come, everyone who is thirsty, come to the waters, and you without money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without cost. Why do you spend money on what is not food and your wages on what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and you will delight yourself in abundance. Here's another type of provision for you and me because you and I would say, yes, I need a roof over my head. I've got to be able to buy my octopus ticket um, so that I can ride. I've got to put food on the table. But how many of us know you can have all of these things provided for and your soul is so hungry and so lean because you don't have these things? That is a need also. And God says to you and to me, he says, are you hungry and thirsty? And here he's talking about a different type of provision. And this is the provision for your soul and for my soul. I just want to say something to you this morning. Are you unhappy and miserable in your soul this morning? Was 22 just a tough year? And you're lonesome, you're depressed, you're, you feel all alone, you feel, you feel all of these things. God knows that that is a need in your life. And what God says is, if you will come to me with these needs, if you'll come to me with these needs, I will meet these needs in your life also. Because he's not talking about a roof over your head and food on the table here, is he? Because he's saying, uh, you've you come without money, buy and eat. Well, how can you buy without money? In God's economy, you can. And so God provides for us in that way. And I just want to encourage you in that this morning. Because we have all gone through times when our hearts were just sad, right? Yeah. When our souls, it, it's true, when our souls were just so tight within us, and God says, you have needs in that area too, and if you will come to me, I will meet those needs in your life, and that is part of his provision for 2023. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's another one. What's the next one? Number two, need number two is direction. Um, when we talk about direction, uh, what do we usually mean? Um, in the Bible, direction usually has to do with which way do I go? Do I take this path or do I take that path? 
for us when we talk about direction, we usually mean which, what choice should I make? I need wisdom, right? Should I take this job or that job? How, what school am I going to go to? Uh, what relationship should I pursue? Uh, parents, those of you that have children, I, 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 I'm sure they're thinking about, is it this school or is it that school? I can promise you because I know the Ding Kong family, sorry, I'm gonna use Eunice as an example, I'll bet in the Ding Kong family, before Eunice went off to school, I'll bet her mom and her dad sat down with her and prayed about it. Did you? <laughs> Chris is laughing now. I'm sure they did. Of course they did. Of course they did. And in these areas of direction, this is one of our other, this is one of our big needs as we go into a new year. So first one is provision, and the second one is direction. Sometimes we call it wisdom. We need to know what to do, don't we? Uh, and we need to know the timing of things as well. Um, I don't know if you all have been watching the news or not, but um, I've been watching what has been happening in the U.S. over Christmas when this blizzard came through. Have you watched that at all? Just horrifying. And actually, I had a whole bunch of other examples, but I thought, no, I've got to keep the message short. So I didn't, I didn't get, bring pictures and things from that. But it was horrifying. So if we were to talk about provision, they had these few provisions, but they ran out of provisions because the blizzard was so horrible. Four feet of snow in about 14 hours. Four, four feet. I am five, five. So right about there. Four feet of snow in about 14 hours. Can you... And, and those of you that are shorter, and Melrose says, <laughs> Mel, Melrose says here, Melrose wouldn't have made it in that, in that storm, and especially in the area called Buffalo. So f about four feet of snow, and the wind was about 10 miles an hour, t about 10 miles an hour, and they said within about 15 minutes, because of the blizzard conditions, because of the storm, it went from 10 miles an hour up to 70 miles an hour within 15 minutes, and that's why so many people got caught in the storm, and that's why so many people died. They weren't prepared, they didn't have the provision. But not only that, as we're talking about direction, they got out in the storm and they lost all sense of direction. People went out in their car, I'm just going to the store to get some provision. Car got stuck, they got out to walk two minutes back home, and because of the blizzard conditions, they could not find their homes, and they froze in the snow. The media, and, and I listen to that, I think, ah, how can that be? How can you not, it's just easy, it's just a minute or two. And I thought, how, how could you get lost? You're on the road, you're on the whatever. What they said was, with the snow and the wind, if you put your hand in front of your face, about a foot and a half in front of your face, you could not see your hand. You could, I can't even imagine that. I can't even, I, I really can't. How can you not see your hand? But it caught so many people. And that's just a physical example. They lost all sense of direction. And what God wants you to know as we talk about essentials for 2023 is that he will provide for you and he will also give you the direction that you need. You know this verse, uh, whoops, sorry. You know this verse very, very well. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Uh, acknowledge him or think about him in all your ways, and he will guide you in the right paths. We know that one, but I want to give you a different one instead. And I want you to look with me at Psalm 25, and I want to suggest to you that if you would like a psalm for 2023, go to Psalm 25, start at the beginning, meditate on it, and go all the way to the end. It is wonderful. I don't even know where I am in my notes. Hang on. Okay, here we are. Who are those who fear the Lord? He will show them the path they should choose. Their souls will abide in prosperity, and their children will inherit the land. This actually puts it all together, and here's the other part of that. The secret counsel of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he reveals his covenant to them. My eyes are always on the Lord, for he will put my, pull my feet out of the net. Let me go to that, back to that again just a minute. And you may not have paid attention to this verse before, but for direction for you and me, it's a wonderful verse. Who are those who fear the Lord? What does fear the Lord mean? I honor him. I obey him. I put him first in my life. What he says, 
I will seek his ways and I will follow what he says. That's what it means to fear the Lord. And he says he will show them the path they should choose. And if you will fear the Lord as you go into 2023, he will show you the path you should choose. Some of you don't know what, some of you are thinking I'm going to return to my home country. Are some of you thinking that? But you don't know when, you don't know how. Will there be enough provision? Fear the Lord, seek him, and he will show you the path that you should choose and when you should choose it. Their souls will abide in prosperity. Their children will inherit the land. Parents, you know what that means? Husbands and wives, you know what that means? That means those that are part of your circle and part of your family. As you honor the Lord and fear the Lord, the direction that he gives you will overflow into their lives as well. Amen? It really will. Godly parents influence their children as well. And then he says, the secret counsel of the Lord is for those who fear him. And he reveals his covenant to them. My sister sent me a story yesterday about a man that was caught in the Buffalo blizzard, buff, this, this blizzard in the U.S. And um, he, was, uh, he was a follower of God. He was a Christian. And he said he went out in his truck or in his car to help uh, to go get some supplies or to help somebody. I can't remember now. It was something like that. And he didn't get very far and his car or truck, I think it was, got stuck in the snow. And he was desperate because the snow was piling up. And he thought, what am I going to do? And so he got out fearfully, but he got out. True story. You'll find it on the news. And he started, he could see, barely see some houses nearby. And he went to the houses and he knocked on the doors and he said, please, please, my car is stuck. I can't get back. May I come in and stay out the storm? Do you know what they said? No. They said, no, I, I, I can't even understand that. And he went to the next house he could see and he knocked on the door and he said, please, can I stay out the storm? My car is stuck. I won't make it. Do you know what they said? No. He went to three or four houses, and everybody said, no, I cannot understand that. But as he was walking back to his car, thinking, what am I going to do? He heard somebody calling for help. And he listened, and he followed the sound, and there was an elderly woman caught in the snow, crying for help. Help me, help me. He got her, brought her into his car. They spent the night in the car, and in the next morning, he got out again to try to get help. The storm was still going, and he found another person. And then he found another person, and they were able to drive a little bit further, but they couldn't get very far. In the end, he rescued in his vehicle 10 people, 10 people. And then he looked, and he knew there's a school nearby, and so he told them, you wait in the car, you wait in the, the vehicle. And he went to the school and he got uh, something from his car and he broke the windows and he got the door open and he went back and he got all the people and he brought them into the school because he knew there's food here and there is warmth here. And they survived the storm. And when they interviewed him afterwards, you know what he said? He said, I thank the Lord that all of those doors and all of those people said, no, no, no. Because of that, I was able to save the lives of 10 others. You see, brothers and sisters, the secret counsel of the Lord is for those who fear him. And things will happen in your life and my life. But if you fear the Lord as you go through these things, God will get you through things that you don't understand, things that I don't understand, and God will direct you through impossible, dangerous circumstances because he's God and he has promised to direct you. And I love verse 15. Look with me because verse 15 leads us to the last essential of 2023. The writer of this psalm says, verse 15, my eyes are always on the Lord. Instead of, my eyes are, where should I go? Where should I go? No. You know what he says? My eyes are always on the Lord. Why? For he will pull my feet out of the net. We sometimes get caught in a net. We sometimes go the wrong way. We sometimes get stuck because we have enemies and we have difficulties. And that 
And he says, for he will pull my feet out of the net. Are you and I going to get it perfectly in 2023? Nope, we're not. We're not always going to get it perfectly. But keep your eyes on the Lord, for he will pull your feet out of the net. And that leads us to your last essential, to my last essential for 2023. And that is protection, care, uh, uh, watching over. And so protection for 2023. And I want you to look with me at this um, at these verses as we come to a close this morning. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed this verse b- before or not from Psalm 27 and 8. Uh, this is a song. I don't know if any of you know that or not. This is some trust in chariots, some in horses. You see, in the world of that time, if you had chariots and horses, you were powerful. If you had chariots and horses, you always defeated the enemy. Always. You were, you were the winner. You had a machine gun and everybody else had a knife, you know, or something like that. You always won. Chariots and horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall, but we rise and stand upright. And God promises you and me in 2023 that he will protect us. His protection is yours. Look with me. Isaiah said, what sorrow to those who go down to Egypt for help and who depend on horses. Do you remember when the children of Israel, when God delivered them out of Egypt, how did the Egyptians chase them? What did they use to go after them? What was it? Chariots and horses, right? Chariots and horses. And so here's this picture. God provides protection. They trust in chariots because they are many. And in the horsemen, because they're very strong, they do not look to the Holy One of Israel and they do not seek the Lord's help. Okay, now, here's the example for us. Ready? I don't know if you're familiar with this story or not. This is from 2 Kings, and this was a time when Elijah had been taken to heaven in what? The chariot of fire. A chariot of fire. Elisha is there. He is in Israel in there. And there is warfare between the king of Aram, who is not godly, and the king of Israel. And you know what happens? God tells Elisha, watch out. And Elisha goes to the king and he says, watch out. The, the, uh, king, the king of Aram is coming here. And then the king of Aram plans something else. And Elisha goes to the king and he says, watch out. The king of Aram is coming here. Remember? So that's in this story. You can go back and read all of it. Remember the verse that we just read a minute ago? The secret counsel of the Lord is with those who fear him. And here's this example. And so the king of Aram believes there's a traitor in the midst. There's somebody here. Uh, I've told you this example years ago, but I was preaching one Sunday morning. And after I preached, somebody came up to me in the service, at the end of the service, and they were really angry. They were angry at me, and they were, I, I was just preaching. And they were angry at somebody else. And you know what they asked me? They said, who told you? Did somebody talk to you about me? Who told you about whatever? And I could truthfully say, nobody has talked to me about you, but what? The secret counsel of the Lord is with those who fear him. So the king of Aram says, which one of you is a traitor? Who has been informing the king of Israel about my plans? It's not us, my lord, the king, the officer replied. Elisha, the prophet in Israel, he tells the king of Israel, even the words you speak in the privacy of your bedroom. Why? Why? The secret counsel of the Lord is with those that fear him. Go and find out where he is, the king commanded, so I can send troops to seize him. And the report came back. Elisha is at Dothan. So what happens? So the king of Aram sent what? Horses, Horses, chariots, and a massive army there. In the Bible, whenever you see that horses and chariots and that, it's um, it's always a symbol of of opposition and the enemies of the Lord. It really is. That's that's what you'll see in the Old Testament. And so he sends these things. They're powerful. They will surely overcome Elisha. They went by night and they surrounded the city. I want to ask you something. In 2022, have you ever felt surrounded and overcome by opposition, by enemy, by trouble, by these things? All of us have. By, By things that you cannot solve. You're in the same situation. Now, here's God's promise for you in in 2023 and always. Here is his essential. They went by night and they surrounded. When the servant of the man of God got up early and went out, he discovered what? An army 
with horses and chariots surrounding the city. There it is again, completely surrounded. So he asked Elijah, oh, my master, what are we to do? You can imagine that, right? What are we to do? What does Elisha say? Elisha said, do not be afraid, for those who are with us outnumber those who are with them. You know what the Lord says to you as you face 2023? Do not be afraid, for those that are with you outnumber those who are against you. How can I be sure of this? How can you be sure of that? And then Elisha prayed, Lord, please open his eyes and let him see. So the Lord opened the servant's eyes. He looked and he saw that the mountain was covered with what? I love this. Horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Brothers and sisters, God's promise to you, this essential of 2023, provision, direction, protection, when you feel surrounded. Oh God, open my eyes to see that your chariots of fire and your house, your horses, they surround me and greater are you than they. Let me give you the companion verse. God's chariots are tens of thousands, thousands upon thousands. The Lord is among them in the sanctuary as he was at Sinai. It's not just God's horses and chariots, brothers and sisters, surrounding you. It's God himself. The angel of the Lord camps around those who fear him. The angel of the Lord is the Lord. The angel of the Lord is an Old Testament um, reference for Jesus himself, the God himself, the angel of the Lord. He encamps around about you. And so God's provision for you in 2023, God's direction for you in 2023, God's protection for you in 2023 are these three essentials that he guarantees. Amen? Amen. Let me pray for you, and then we'll close with some, with some testimonies. I invite you with me this morning in the area of provision, direction, and protection to look to the Lord and let him open your eyes to see what he has for you. Lord, here this morning, we thank you for your essentials that you provide to us, essentials of provision, Help us not to run after them and worry about them. Help us to prioritize, to seek you first. And you have said, then you don't have to worry about these other things. I'll take care of those things. Lord, for direction. God, sometimes we don't know which way to go. We don't know what to choose. We don't know when to choose it. But Lord, you have promised your direction as we fear you and as we honor you. So Lord, we do that and you'll show us the path to go. And Lord, finally for your protection. Oh God, we know that as we face this year, there are times when we are going to feel so overwhelmed, overcome, and surrounded on all sides. Open our eyes to see that your chariots of fire and your horsemen and your warriors are round about us, surrounding us, greater and greater than anything that stands against us. And your protection and your presence are with us in this year. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord. Very quickly, very briefly, if we don't have time this morning, we'll do it next Sunday. You want to do it this Sunday or next Sunday? Do we have a testimony this morning to close? Testimony or two? We've got the mics ready, and if we don't, I, I, re I spoke longer than I intended. But if there's a testimony this morning, we want to give it some time. And if not, if you say, we're ready, we're ready, we're, re we're ready for the fourth floor, we'll do that as well. Um, and we'll have time next week as we, as we prepare. Okay. Let me go back to the announcements. Melrose, did you put the announcement in here? I missed it. Take me back to the announcements just a minute. Any testimonies this morning? Mercy has a testimony. Come on up. Here we go. You have, you have to stand there. No, and then turn around. And then you can hold. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay, there we go. 
um, I want to say that um, in all circumstances, we can say that um, um, God is um, present. Um, this, this year is, um, it was a bit, um, not just a bit, it was a very, um, how can I say it? Mercy, you said goodbye to some family members, didn't you? Yeah. Some loved ones. Yeah. Um, it was a very sorrowful year for my family. Um, I can say that in almost three consecutive years, I lost loved ones, a family member. Um, but I can say that in all of this, I thank God for his presence and his um, enduring love that comforts, comforted us in this in, the, in those um, time of sorrows. And I know that um, I cannot say what lays ahead before me this year, but my hope and my strength is always in the Lord, believing that He is always in control of our lives. And I will always look up to him, no matter what life brings to me. And I can say that um, our hope is always alive in him. He is our living hope, and Jesus is always the same. He is the same yesterday, he is the same today, and he will be the same tomorrow. And I will stick to him whatever happened and whatever the future um, brings to me and to my family. I just praise and just thank my father who is always sustained me in all of this and he would always be faithful and merciful to me. I praise God and thank you. Happy New Year to all. <laughs> Amen. 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 It's, it's, been a tough, it's been a tough time. We, we're so thankful for Mercy that um, she has been willing to, to continue serving the church and to, to, to remain steadfast. Mercy's one of the really old timers, really one of the old timers, though she looks so young, right? Um, but from the, from the very beginning. We're really grateful at Lighthouse for all of you who are newer in the church, but we're also grateful for those who have been part of Lighthouse for a long time and who, who, know, what, who know the DNA of Lighthouse. This is how we started. This is how we go on. And your faithfulness to us uh, and to the Lord encourages us. Um, I want to pray. Um, I want to pray for us right now. And I want to pray for those of us who have had griefs and had farewells in the last year or two. Um, we want to, would somebody just come by Stella right now? We pray that the year ahead will be a time of healing and strength and hope. Because it's kind of tough. Everybody else may be around is drinking champagne and they're saying, Happy New Year. And there are those that are looking ahead and saying, God, what does this future hold? Somebody near... Um, near mercy too and if there are others uh, Rachel and Irish you've lost you've lost your your mom um, just recently and there may be others as well who have lost Carolyn you've lost people also haven't you two, two brothers and your mom as well and there may be there may be others that you have felt I, I have lost this or that Rhea also yeah your, fa your father, right? Your father. If you have, and, and for some of us, it may be a little bit longer, but we still feel, you know, I was, I was thinking about this on the, on the board, out of the, all the people that were on the board, everybody except one, two, 
lost an immediate family member in the last three years, Moses, Steve, and all of us, me with dad and others. I want to just pray for you. Did you, you lost also? Your father also. Let me just, Kathleen. My grandma and my niece. Right, grandma, oh, that's right, grandma and niece. If you're seated next to someone, can we just take a minute? I know, like, oh, we're looking at the time. Can we just pray for, for just pray for one another, for God's comfort, and that God will give, um, that God will give hope in the new year, because not because the year is a new year that there will be hope, but as Amy said in what she shared with the board, we trust not in the new year, but in the God who makes all things new. Let me, let me pray for us. And would you pray for one another? Somebody's near you this morning. Just hug, hug them and let's pray. Amen. Lord, this morning as a church family, we just come to you right now. And we remember our loved, our loved ones here in Lighthouse that we've said, we've said goodbye to, to, to Ida who has lost a family member, to a, a parent, Lord. And for, for all of us, Lord, we remember these things. And God, we know that there's hope in you, but Lord, we're in this body and this earth and it is not easy. And so Lord, we pray, we pray your comfort, we pray your strength, we pray your provision and your direction and your protection upon our brothers and our sisters this morning. Lord, where the enemy has sought to, to hurt and damage, would you step in and would you begin to restore as you have been? Would you begin to lift hearts? Would you again breathe hope, breathe life, breathe direction into our friends, and Erilyn as well, who's lost um, her mother. So many, Lord, and Lord, I, so many of us have, Lord, I, I can't even name them all. But Lord, you see every one of them. We ask for your strength. And we ask, oh God, in this new year, that we will again walk with renewed vigor, renewed strength, that in, in you there will be a fountain of hope and a fountain of joy. Restore, O oh Lord, the joy of our salvation. We pray. We thank you that we can come to you. O oh God, may this not be a bad year, but may it be a good year, a good year of restoration. And comfort and love and strengthen our brothers and our sisters through us. Give us hearts of care, comfort, and love. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to stop here for today. I'm looking at the time. We love you. If we didn't call your name, the Lord knows we're praying for you. We do love you. We hope you'll have a great week, and we invite you online. I'm so sorry. You can only taste the uh, cinnamon rolls that Ida made. And the lemon cake that Lisa baked. And the Christmas cookies and the ginger snaps that Amy, our board, our board member, baked. And it's going to let us decorate on the fourth floor. But if you're here in person, we invite you upstairs. There are bread, cookies, cakes, coffee, tea. Go up and get an appetizer before you go to lunch. Before those youth eat it all. God bless you, everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And we will be talking, oops, sorry, we'll be talking next week about a reset time as we wait on the Lord. Amen? God bless you. Run upstairs quickly. God bless.